my opinion about what she did on her IG stories. What what she did on her IG stories. Listen there, man. Um, Not smart. Not smart at all. Of all people to go after, of all people to sub, of all people to shade, whatever the proper slang is, you do not go for the most decorated track and field athlete in U.S. history. (laughs) To which Jason Johnson uh, tweeted the brother from another account. Y'all, I got things to say tomorrow, to which I reply, you never. Uh, So, (laughs) uh, Mr. Black Lightning, hit us with it. Bring the thunder. So, so thank you guys. This is, this is, I feel like there has been, it's like there's been chains on us all, okay? There's been chains and gates around what we could and could not say about Shakari Richards. Uh, because of, of the pain of her circumstances, because of her losing her mother, uh, because of, of just the amount of institutional racism that many African-American and African women and Caribbean women were facing heading into the Olympics. So I think a lot of the criticism people were concerned about it because you didn't want to appear to be piling on. But we don't have to worry about that no more because it's not the Olympics. And the fact of the matter is, this is, this is, this is bag fumbling at an Olympic level. Okay, we can accept that Shakari Richardson used marijuana and that cost her a chance to be in the Olympics. And we can argue about how those rules are dumb. We can talk about her pain, blah, blah, blah. My attitude at the time was she took responsibility for it. And that was the end of the story, right? I mean, she, it, it, it's hard. It's difficult. It's frustrating. It was frustrating to see uh, Sue Bird and Megan Rapinoe talk about how they have, like, endorsements from marijuana companies, but for some reason they're still able to compete. But once that was over, you can't go out and come in ninth place in a race after you've been talking smack. You can't then follow that up by attacking Allison Felix, Michael, as you said, the most decorated track athlete in the history of this country. And look, I don't care if it's some real beef. I don't care if it's some Sloan Stevens, you know, uh, a Serena Williams kind of thing. Maybe Shakari Richardson felt like, Oh, that's just performing. She could have called me. Why is she going to say nice things on TV? Even if that is the case, silence is always free. Shutting up is always free. And I don't know who controls her phone, her friends, her crew, her girlfriends, her staff, but they need to snatch that phone out of her hand. I teach people her age. They can't stay off them internets. But if she keeps doing this internet nonsense, she's going to cost herself a lot of money. That, that's, that is... That is the number one lesson. You got to start winning races again before you can start talking smack about people who had to go through an extra security line because they got medals to bring home from Tokyo. Hmm. Listen, I agree. I agree with you. I agree with you, Jason. Uh, and, and probably have the same take, but just to be fair, on the flip side, is there anything, is there any approach Shakari Richardson could have taken that would have gotten her some grace from the public. I'm guessing maybe no. What do you think? No, no, you don't say anything like this is not a keep my name. But what if she what if she what if she but what if she did the right? I'm saying my point is if she had done the right thing, if she doesn't go after Allison Felix, if she says, look, that was a great race. And it looked like I don't even belong on the same track. I got a lot of work to do. These women are phenomenal. Even the seventh place finisher is great. I got a lot of work to do. Do people still come for her? I'm guessing they do, well, right? Well, see, Michael, see, I, I make a distinction between racist, misogynist, and bad faith haters and people who were relatively neutral who have been moved to one position or another because of her own behavior and because of her own words, right? Because the vast majority, 99% of the public outside of your racist Ben Shapiro's and your Charlie Kirk's and everything, 99% of the actual sports world, right? And certainly fans in general were somewhat, somewhat empathetic or sympathetic towards her when she missed the chance of performing the Olympics. Yes, it's frustrating. Yes, she made a decision, blah, blah, blah. But when you talk a lot of smack and then you lose a race, now now you got that sort of Andre Agassi energy where you got all this attention and all this love, but, but you ain't really beaten the best at this particular point. Like if we go back to the 90s, And I think that was really the issue. If she had just lost and said, as you said, I think that would have been better. But the fact of the matter is, in the world of professional athletics, you win by winning. I I don't care if you're a nice person or not. It's winning. 
Simone Biles recovered everything that she may have lost by coming in and competing on something that ain't even her strong suit and getting a bronze. Now we're not going to hear a peep because Simone Biles came and did what she said she was going to do. Anyone who questioned her when she had to step out because of the twisties, which was always ridiculous, is like, I'm not, I'm not about to judge this person. I don't know what she does. But anyone who even had those doubts can't say anything now because she came home with some extra around her neck. Shakari Richard doesn't have that right now. She's known for being somebody talking about being fast, but showing up slow in the instances that matter, and then attacking people. This is this is this is the worst way for you to be performing. You can't talk that much smack and not back it up on the field. And I say that as somebody who used to run track. Which is, which is why, um, you know, we're talking about missteps. We're talking about better approaches. But being honest, um, you know, we in the media, and all we all Michael and I can control is this show. But we in the media are co-conspirators, if you will, or, or we're, you know, accomplices because, and again, she was a huge story for all the reasons we, we know going into the Prefontaine Classic. We know that. And the news is the news. And Michael and I did our best to make sure that we did not shortchange um, Elaine Thompson hurrah and her 10-5-4. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, and for that matter, all three Jamaican ladies who repeated, you know, sweeping the podium the way they did in Tokyo. We tried our best not to do that, but still, if I may say so, we failed because any any attention that you're giving the ninth place finisher is too much attention, and we were guilty of that. I mean, if we were going to talk about an American, probably should be spending more time talking about a thing mo. And, and while I'm in the, you know. Uh, while I'm in the, you know, correction mood, I'll just say this real quickly, Michael. You, you know, you observing my shirt. Uh, I, you know, I got a shirt for every occasion. This is to minimize any possible misunderstanding. Because Jason, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something, bro. I got so many Jamaican sisters at my head right now, brothers and sisters for that matter, at my head right now. And I do want to take this opportunity. I, I do want to apologize um, because I perpetuated, which it was not my intention, but I perpetuated the notion that it, American athletes are better than Jamaican athletes. And we're talking about Shelly Ann Frazier Price. We're talking about somebody who's run 10, seven or better 20 times. I'm an eight time medalist. So, you know, she is there, Allison Felix, right? But I yesterday in particular, because I had tried to uh, understand Shakari's bravado on, on Saturday, Jason, on Monday, I came back yesterday, Michael will tell you, and I went at Shakari because she went at Allison and in doing so perpetuated this idea that uh, Allison and American athletes are better than Jamaican athletes or worse. And this is where it got deep and my head wasn't here, but this is the conversation that's ongoing right. that oh, yeah. black Americans are different than Jamaican black people. And I was yeah. certain. I mean, like, no, 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 right. no, no. Whoa, <laughs> there's no xenophobia here. But I, but again, I'm apologizing, Jason. Because I understand, and like I told everybody on Twitter today, I replied to as many people as I could. I understand why it came off that way, and I regret that it came off that way. Because what I didn't know, I didn't know, talking about putting your phone down, I didn't know she was out here uh, liking tweets, comparing Shelly Ann Frazier Price to Lil Wayne. Like right, I, I, I right. said yesterday, Michael, right, that the coconut tweet was completely out of pocket. But there is yeah. no right. world in which she should be insulting anybody like that. Right. But the Allison Felix one, last thing I'll say on this, and I'll stop rambling. Allison Felix hit differently because it's Allison Felix being gracious when she didn't have to be on national television and she's some and she's an OG that's not even in her, you know, that she's not competing with her. I was I was at least looking at the other stuff as bravado as as competitive trash talk and again can't cross a line, but that's where I was coming from. So just again to all my Jamaican brothers and sisters. It is all love. Cause, but I didn't realize that I was perpetuating that, so I understand why so many people were pissed. And Michael, like you, telling me I told you so, because I get it. <laughs> well, I want to I want to add to this. I mean, look, we, we we talked about this last week. When it comes to confessionals, right? There there is no area that is in, in more constant confessionals than, than, than political news. I mean, we talk about losers all the time. Why are we still talk about Trump, right? <laughs> so so yeah, so right. You got the ninth grade person. <laughs> You guys talk about the ninth place person is nothing compared to occasionally, occasionally uh, the, the press spending so much time on the guy, the twice impeached loser, as my colleague Nicole calls him, 
you know, who's, who's hanging out in Florida. So, you know, it, it happens. Sometimes we got to follow the story that the eyeballs go to, even if sort of yeah. our internal journalism yeah. meter is saying, I don't really know if this is the story story. Exactly. So it happens. Exactly. So that's a per that's a perfect segue. Let's talk about the rightful president, uh, the one who actually did win the election, uh, Joe Biden. And I, I just put it in my feed. Should Joe Biden back down because he seems so insistent on saying, "Hey, I did listen. I did the right thing. Oh yeah, I did the right thing." And he's getting a lot of criticism. Do you think he should back down, or do you think he should soften his stance a bit uh, on this Afghan on his Afghanistan decision? So I said this yesterday, I might have tweeted this to you guys, but I said this yesterday. I think a lot of the criticism about Afghanistan reminds me of, of, of this sort of scenario. It's like, it's like an old TV show that everybody forgot about, okay, and then they find out it's getting canceled and suddenly everybody got an opinion on it. Oh my God, I can't, how are you taking this off the air? How, oh my God, blah, blah. you haven't watched this show in years. How you got an opinion? It ain't even the original cast anymore. That is essentially Afghanistan. <laughs> That, you know, like large numbers of people have not been paying attention to Afghanistan for years. They didn't even know that Hamid Karzai wasn't uh, wasn't the, the president of the country anymore. And now they want to take pot shots at Joe Biden and say, oh, I can't believe you're managing it this way, you're managing it that way. So I think a lot of the criticism of him is bad faith. Now, are there people who I have talked to and interviewed and said, hey, look, this problem has been going on for years. There have been people trying to get out of that country for years. I had a great guy who I spoke to who was like, look, the applications to get out of Afghanistan that have been available to people for four or five years, they're in English. Okay, <laughs> like, how are you supposed, you know, if you were, you know, how are you supposed to be getting out of the country? You gotta get this stuff done in paperwork in English. So I, I, I look at this as it is not Joe Biden's specific problem. I think a lot of the criticism of him about the uh, Afghanistan in general is unfair. Uh, should the exodus be handled better? Of course it can, there is not a clean way to do it. But I'll also say this, and I connect this to how Joe Biden has handled police reform and how Joe Biden has handled the courts and how President Biden has handled voting rights. What Afghanistan shows is that when President Biden really wants to do something, he'll just do it. And we haven't seen that same kind of energy when it comes to voting rights. And we haven't seen that same kind of energy when it comes to police reform. So this is an example of where the president's priorities are and sometimes where they should be. Um, let's lighten the mood, shall we? Uh, another, Jason, one of the things I love about you, man, like, you know, you're another uh, extension of the show, practically, a third brother from another, uh, bruh man from the fifth floor, basically. Um, because, you know, you tweet at the show all the time. So the other day, oh, we yeah. were talking about top five Marvel movies randomly. You were just like, damn, why y'all ain't had me off for this today? So, right. without further ado, what you got? Let's go. I'm, I want to see. I want to see I'm Jason Johnson. And like I said, if this now the embargo's off, I can tell y'all a little bit about Shang Chi too. So number one on my list, Black Panther. This was tough because I don't think Black Panther is a flawless film. But I cannot think of any other Marvel movie. I can't really think of any other film except maybe Love and Basketball when I was in college that had as much of an impact on me as Black Panther. I, <laughs> I this, this movie, it made me laugh. It, it, it made me think. I literally said, I think I told you guys this before. I saw Black Panther four times. Tiffany took me to, to my fourth time seeing that movie, right, here, here in D.C. And literally, I sat in the theater uh, when the Kendrick Lamar song and everything comes on at the end. I just sat in the theater. I was like, I don't even know what the heck I just saw. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. So that's number one. Number two, Captain America Winter Soldier. Probably one of the best action films of any variety ever Seriously. made throughout my life. And it was it's really like, it's like hard. the Bourne trilogy. It's crazy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was really hard. Black Panther yeah. or or uh, yeah. or or, yeah. or, or, or this movie. So then, third one, Avengers Endgame. There is no movie I have seen in the last 30 years of my life that had a greater audience reaction than this one. Falcon comes out and says, on your left, right? When 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 Captain America takes the hammer. I mean, like, people were crying, they were laughing when Peter comes back. I mean, like, the, it, and, and it's meme-worthy. I mean, the whole battle has become a meme on Twitter. So Endgame has to be there. And I take Endgame over Infinity because Infinity sort of felt, it, it, it almost felt like uh, uh, Mockingjay, right? It felt like a Hunger Games. It's only really the first part. The real movie is Endgame. Spider-Man Far From Home, this was an amazing accomplishment because the original Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire I really loved. Spider-Man Far From Home is probably the most perfect Spider-Man movie I've ever seen. 
as somebody who collects Spider-Man comic books, and he was my favorite character for a very, very long time. It was perfect. Tom Holland was perfect. The action was amazing. The plot was amazing. It was a kid's movie, and the way that Spider-Man is supposed to be a kid's movie. So I'm absolutely love it. So I'm going to get in right okay. here. I'm going to get in right here because okay. I'm good with everything. So people will often ask, what is the worst Marvel movie? And some oh, people will say that's Thor The Dark World. For me, no. and I love Iron Man because we're both genius, playboy, billionaire philanthropist, but Iron Man 3 was terrible. I couldn't stand <laughs> Iron Man 3. I could not stand. I, that, that is a shocker I like, that you're I Iron like, Man 3 in your top five. Listen, five. listen. I ain't like none of them. I ain't like none of the Iron Man movies. None of them. Oh, whoa, 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 seriously, whoa. I mean, like whoa, 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 whoa. none of them. None of them. This is, like, this hey, is they didn't go back. When's the last time you watched it? Didn't age oh, well. Go back to day, day before. I watch them all the time. Uh, yeah, I saw like less than a month. Ago, I wish I had more hands. Like every fifteen minutes. <laughs> look. Okay, I real quick, because because we, we're running out of time, but but real quick on Iron Man three. Why Iron Man three in your top five of all the movies? Iron Man three. Why? Yes. And it was really tough it was between Iron Man 3 and the Avengers. One, because quite frankly, it is one of the best action movies. And what it shows is the creativity of these characters. When he saves people falling out of an airplane, there's misdirection. There's, you know, he, yeah, he no flies kidding. out of the suit. The suit gets hit. His relationship with the kid. I thought it was a great character film. And some Marvel movies, my worst okay. ones, are things like Doctor Strange and Ant-Man because there is no character. Iron Man 3 was an amazing <gasps> character. Study. Whoa! Oh, my God. That, he just oh, saved Doctor Strange. Hey! Oh, my God. That's hey! That's in my top five. Hey, what time is it? What time is it? You got to go. Hey, man, I know you up against the clock. You up Wait. against the clock. Roll the music. Wait. <laughs> oh, man. Wait, don't roll don't, don't That's in my yet. top five. Don't yet. We don't, we don't need oh, to revisit Hollywood. Oh, oh but, man. Like, that's, you, you, hitting, you hitting Hollywood hurts. No, you didn't Holly wear her. Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange is such a well-written movie. It is oh, a great oh. movie. See, I. That's a good and, movie. And I'll tell you That's what. A good movie. That's a good movie. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why I like Infinity War over Endgame. I was listening to your explanation. I gotta hear this now, uh, Jason. This, is, this sounds vulgar to me. It is because you know what? Mind. All right. Endgame. Right. Tell hey Gary. Tell Monica it, we'll be with her in a minute. Go ahead. Go ahead. Endgame. This this is and I I I don't I don't dislike Endgame. I don't dislike it. I, I love Endgame. But if I had to criticize it, it is a hero movie that has the response that the audience expects. It's expected. Okay, here they come. They're going to come up. Everybody's ganging up on Thanos. And, 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 and society and civilization has been saved. You know what about Infinity War? Infinity War is uncomfortable. But in Infinity War, that, that has some realism to it. And it ain't always going to turn out the way you want it to. The way you want it to, you know? right? It's really well. It's, it's really one movie. It's really one movie split into two. I mean, it's hard sure. to separate the two. But okay. Having yeah. said all that, before all right. we go, before we go, and we got to go to break, so we got to really make this quick. Jason, like, we cannot have a conversation with you without figuring out whether or not you are in on this milk crate challenge. I need a take. I need a milk crate <laughs> challenge shape before we go to break. Look. This thing is putting more brothers in the hospital than COVID, right? Like, this is that level of danger. I read that off the tweet. I don't Here understand it what this is about. I've talked to my students about it. I'm like, where are y'all finding these crates? I don't understand any of it. I know. I, it is, I, I, I it haven't seen crazy. them in a while. I know. Did they take them from all the basketball courts? All of the TV Who's stands no longer have crates? Where are these Who's with the Canyon Records in? Oh, oh my God! Right there, that's the one. It's so, it that's, looks the one. So that's the rib dude. <laughs> I call him Rib to me. Man. Make this to me. But look, I'm proud of the creativity hey. of it. If everybody wants to reenact Mario Brothers, go for it. It just don't make no sense to me. <laughs> my health oh my That dude just fell on his right, back. Man. That dude fell on his back. That dude fell on his head. Oh man! <laughs> yes. Holy. I mean, does it hurt as bad as it looks? He kicked the crates out from under the brother. That was the one I saw. I know. Like, where he got top we got to fight. Kicked it. I'm like, yo, it's on site. Like, you ain't going to kick the crates out from under me. This is dangerous enough as it is. It makes no sense. All right. We got to go, man. Appreciate you, bro. We'll talk to you later. All right, man. All right, see y'all next week. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.